The pink one? Oh. Okay. Just checking. Hey everyone, welcome to Cat's Creations on Sunday night, where tonight we are going to be making a candy cane wreath for 2021. I try to make one every year and add a little bit of variety, make it a little bit different. So this is our theme for tonight. So pretty much everything red and white and as much candy cane or candy um, embellishments we can put in here as possible is kind of how we're going. So um, we are going to start with our 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. Again, this is Sunday night, um, October the 17th of the year 2021. So you're getting a little bit of what the private group gets all the time, which is an overhead view of what I'm doing. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Some people say they like to see me because they miss that interaction and that, I don't know, that personal thing. So um, that's why we're leaving Fridays at Fridays and Sundays we'll try to sneak in the overhead view. But let's go ahead and wire this up. 14 inch dollar to wreath frame each has six sections. They're all done exactly the same way. Um, you're gonna take your pipe cleaner and you're gonna use your weld marks as guides and you're going to wire this together just like that. And then you're going to use this one and your weld mark and kind of find an in-between space. And we're gonna put this here, wiring together the outside too this and then we're going to do one over here so basically you have 12 to the outside six on the inside for a grand total of 18 on a 14 inch dollar tree frame with four rails we are going to ruffle using the metallic and white snowball mesh this was from craft outlet and these are cut to 20 inch pieces and you're basically just going to walk your fingers right up the middle, just like this. Thank you, Anna, for sending 100 stars. Thank you, Anna. And you're going to take the finished edge. You're going to add that right to the center. And then I always like to start in the center. I don't know why. It's just a good starting place for me. Did you have something to say, Steve? Nope. Okay. And then I know I'm not going to be using any of the inside, so I'm going to be removing those as we go, just like that. And then I do them in the order that I come across the next pipe cleaner, just so that, you know, I'm not having to mess with the mesh that much. Because this mesh, you cannot cut with the wood burning tool. This has to be cut with your rotary cutter because of the cotton snowball mesh fibers that are in here, it won't go through the wood burner. It just likes to smoke and we don't want that. So we will deal with a little bit of phrase from time to time as we're putting this together. So we wanna to try to handle it as little as possible. If this is your first time joining us, please let us know. I'd love to know where you're from. So just say, hi, my name's Kat. I'm from Southern California. This is my first time joining you. And if you want to get notified when we go live, just make sure you're clicking the like and follow button on this page. And then Thank you'll you get notified. Sharing, yes. So if you want, because this is what I did when I first started making my wreaths, is if I found a design that I wanted to work on later, I would share it right back to my page because it was so much easier to find it on my page than on a lot of the big wreath makers because sometimes they were making two or three wreaths a day. It would take me a long time to try to find that one that I was looking for. And I found that if I just shared it on my page, I had everything right where I needed to when I was ready to put one together. So push this one back through. This being that snowball mesh, it does have a tendency of getting overly like the edges. It, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's got these little 
pieces that kind of stick up and those have a tendency, this is where this becomes a problem because it likes to catch on everything else that it touches. Sometimes it has it, sometimes it doesn't. Some pieces here do and other pieces don't. And that's just part of the way it's made. Okay. Let's see. So I'm just giving these a couple twists to the outside, just enough to make sure that our mesh stays intact. And then I like to also take my pipe cleaners and pull them to the outside. It just makes them easier to find when I'm ready to go ahead and add my ribbon tails or my embellishments too. Okay. Just like so. I love this mesh. I've gotten lots of compliments from lots of viewers that are like, that mesh is gorgeous. Why do you cover it up? And it's, well, because I wasn't intending on making just a solid mesh wreath. I did have plans on adding ribbon, adding a bow, adding a sign. And this is actually the easiest deco mesh method to try if you are wanting to jump in and learn how to make a deco mesh wreath. The ruffle is the easiest. Always tucking those inside pipe cleaners back in the middle. about, I think halfway, from finishing our base. Okay, and then we're to the inside. What are you guys up to tonight? Where's everyone from? Love hearing where you guys are from. You're awful quiet over there. Mm -hmm. I'm just going back. Uh, Jansen, what about fraying with this type of mesh? Um, you will have frays, but that's why I'm really particular about the way that I am placing this in the mesh. So I use those finished edges to the top and the bottom, which is generally where most people are going to touch or handle your wreath. So those cut edges are kind of going on the inside, on the sides. Mm -hmm. Hi all, hi Nancy. Richard said I found some 14 inch work wreaths tonight at a local store, $2 each. Nice. That's Where'd you good. find those? He bought about 15 of them. Oh, I probably would. Work frame wreaths generally go for about 5 to $6 a piece. Mm -hmm. Glenn says, boy, am I confused. You use the same match with the retro Christmas wreath. I thought it was single replay. No, you're right. This was the same mesh. Yeah. Nope. This is, I think. When I had originally purchased this mesh, it was to do a candy cane theme dream because it just reminds me of, you know, the peppermint candies that are like the little puffball peppermints. So this was always the plan. Retro just kind of came after the fact. 
Uh, this will just be one full roll of mesh. Each piece has got the 20 inches. Mm -hmm. Yep, no leftovers. Mm -hmm. Vicki, I love the name of your city. She's like, I'm from Gun Barrel City, Texas. Wow, in Texas, no less. The piece is in Trinidad, Tobago, and the Caribbean. Wow, welcome. Thanks for joining us. That's a late night. Is it a late night or early morning for you? Huh? It's a place I'd love to just retire to. Right. Because I'm thinking the East Coast time, it's like nine. So Trinidad, isn't that maybe like another 10 or 11 o'clock p.m.? Not sure. I don't, no, I don't think it's that far. Okay. I'm just being super careful when I separate that mesh. About four more pieces to go. Awesome. Karen said, I'm excited that you are using a candy cane sign because I'm making a wreath with the same sign right now. Are I'm you really? This wreath with you. Ooh, that sounds like fun. I wonder if we're going to have the same stuff. So today... So for Keisha, it's 9 p.m. tonight. So they're just three hours ahead. Okay, so they're just like East Coast time. Yeah. So no additional mm -hmm. extra bonus right. hours on top. I was thinking, well, maybe it's a little bit further out. more and then our base is done kind of almost looks like a big peppermint candy cane like if you put a stick on it it could look like a lollipop put some cellophane on top okay there we go I am just separating all that. So I have one piece, which is going to go in right there. Sure that I think is somewhere south of Dominican Republic, which is south of Cuba. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I know it's out there, somewhere. Off, somewhere east of the Florida North coastline. Of the okay, so there is our base, and I'm going to go ahead right now and add the ribbon tails to the outside, and this color combination is a little bit different than what I have done in the past. So we're kind of going every other one with a um, sheer, it's like a candy cane stripe ribbon that's cut to 14 inch pieces and I'm going to do these on all the ones that are white just the white ones this ribbon is from Costco so just our white and then we're going to toggle some other peppermint ribbon in here So I just fold it in half to find a midway point and then I'm just kind of gathering or pinching right up the middle and then placing that right inside the pipe cleaner. Two twists and then just fan to the outside. Super windy here today. I'll post yeah. pictures tomorrow. We lost a really good sizable branch on our tree. Um, we had hired someone who was supposed to be here over the weekend to thin out the canopy. And some of our branches that are just taking the abuse from the wind on a huge willow tree we have. And they kind of 
skipped us this week and and so thus we had this big loss of our branch that I knew was coming once the winds picked up again. And a little ribbon. Isn't that pretty? It's so soft, it's so sheer without being overly heavy. Blends right in. It kind of does, but it'll pop once I add the other. So now what we're gonna do on this ribbon is we're gonna take this snowball edge mesh, hence snowball mesh, um, and it's got peppermint candies and different kinds of candy canes, the red and white, the red, white, and green. And we're gonna do half bows, which are bring your wired edges together, go up about two inches, and then kind of pinch in right here. And we're gonna take that and that is going to go right inside and we're going to give it a couple twists okay just like so i'm going to grab this one because it's kind of in my way i don't want to work with that edge you have to right side one of your tails and then we've got this gorgeous peppermint ribbon we're going to do some shortcuts as i'm working on each section and I have, let me look at this. Hobby Lobby makes this, I like these. These are fun. Um, it's like, it looks like crushed peppermints. So these are their scatters and fillers that are in their seasonal section. These are $4.99 a bag and you get 40% off of that. And that's as many as you get, but this would make Let's do a small and a large on each of those. So you also have a question. Hey, Kat, she's from Buffalo, New York. How many wreaths per week do you make like, for a busy season? Uh, well, right now with the groups, I'm doing four each week because I do four lives, mm -hmm. two on Sunday, one on Monday, and then one on Sunday. So four scheduled. And then if I have any custom orders, Right. Then I would do extra during the week. Plus, like, the angels. Yeah. yeah. But I try to just do four, because that's a lot of time. It's a lot of time to prep and pull things out and figure out your whole design process. Love these. So these are super simple. So when you push them on, because your pipe cleaners are fairly stiff, um, let me find one that's a little easier. See, like the black. And let's find. They just literally push right in there, and then you just pull them out. See how you can see where the black fuzz is? That's where it would tell me I need to add a dab of glue, like on here. If I pull this out, here's my hole. I make sure that I keep it on the side where the hole is. Put a dot of glue. And then we go right back on top. Same thing with the little one. You always want to make sure you're using a dual temperature glue gun and that it's on low. Most of the time people don't have a dual temperature. And so the temperature where glue has a tendency of getting pretty hot. And that's where you get it. You burn yourself pretty good. Richard, yeah, they're styrofoam. And then they're kind of painted with either, you know, either like the white... Yeah, Mostly. I don't know what's on here. It's really cool looking yeah. though. It looks like crushed peppermints. So that's the idea that I'm going for. Or you could go, you know, the solid red and the glittery white that they sell. Just because this is going candy cane themed, I thought we would go. I mean, it's really the only time you can use these, right? Sylvia, so the, uh, the ribbons are cut, the, inch, the two oh. and a half inch are cut to 14 inch. Yeah, and the inch and a halfs are cut to 18. I forgot to tell you the inch and a halfs. So we just right side that, we're adding just pops of white. So that's what you're going to see is these, you know, uh, red base with white bows or white bows with a red base. And those styrofoam balls were from Hobby Lobby. Yeah. Yeah, I said they're $4.99. Um, and then you take 40% off of that. 
What is Lobby has? Lobby Lobby has 50% off fall and Christmas this week. Ooh. Okay, so those are half off, which makes this entire huge bag like $2.50. How can you go wrong with that? I mean, because you're not even going to come anywhere close to using even half the bag, even 25% of the bag. So I'm trying to do two things at once. Good, so I didn't see those in Hobby Lobby, but I had to get the red and white ones. Oh yeah, definitely red and white. And remember, you can, if you want to, and go back and get those, um, red and white you'll use for Valentine's Day too. And, and yeah, 4th of July uh, for your patriotic wreaths and everything else. So, here we go. There's one. And then, yeah, they could be used as frosted berries in a woodland wreath too. They sure could. Oh, that would look gorgeous on an evergreen wreath. It's kind of snow colored. Uh, a lot of the ribbon is from Costco. This ribbon that I'm using right now, the with the snowball edge, is from Craft Outlet. Mm -hmm. And then the two and a half inch, two and a half inch candy cane is from Michaels, but then the rest are from. But I haven't shown them the rest of that ribbon yeah. yet. Yeah. So this is from Costco, and this is from Craft Outlet. When I get to the others, I'll tell you where they were from. Your wreath is turning out absolutely amazing and gorgeous. Thank you. Hope you've all had a great weekend so far. Let's get a big one. And then a little one. I wonder what they use to create that because it's they're so soft and, and furry. Okay, so the next ones we're using are going to be this two and a half inch same thing it's kind of like this but no green just different kinds of peppermint and this came from i want to say craft outlet yes 14 inch pieces again we're gonna do these i'm gonna do them in between not every single one but we're kind of toggling these and a different one so this is going to go on red. Again, pull that down. If you have a fray, you can just deal with that. And then we're using this inch and a half red and white glittery peppermint stripe. And this was from Costco quite a few years ago. And this is an 18 inch piece. So this is going in on top of our peppermint candy. Again, cutting these down. We will place the little crushed peppermint berries on them. Let's try to get that one right in a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so we're skipping this one and then we're gonna go to the next one. Told you this one's gonna be candy cane. As much candy cane stuff as I think. Well, I can't say that I possess because there's probably stuff I haven't even figured out that I own yet. So there's only three sets of these, and then there's gonna be three sets of the other. And these are just going around the outside 12. Let's get rid of that fray. Right side one, and then let's trim this down. We put our little holes on the end. Just like that. So we're skipping and then going to the next one, which is right here. Let's get that fray out of there. That was a sign is from Craft Outlet. 
Mm -hmm. I don't know that they have any more left. I know that they were really running out of quite a lot of their signs and I don't even know if they'll have them back in stock as it gets closer to Christmas. Those are going to be hard to find. So try like the reshop, craft outlet, deco exchange, white bayou, um, trendy tree. There's quite a few. Or in worst case scenario, you know, Google um, candy cane. This is a six by 12 sign. Okay, two more. Okay, now on the next set, we're doing strictly candy canes, and these are like spearmint candies. This is from Michael's Ribbon, and then we're also doing the smaller version of this in the inch and a half, and this is from Craft Alley. So 14 inch for the two and a half, and then the inch and a half is 18. in here and I'm going to right side some of this so this is an upper so I'm going to take the ends and flip them in so I can actually see where I'm working and just because the sign has just a subtle tint of the green it's in the five cent logo and it's in the 1902 that's the only reason I'm popping the green in it. Just little pieces. Here we go. Right side. Take these down. I'm usually cutting them to about an inch to an inch and a half. And then putting them little balls on the end. You don't have to. I just find that that creates a really nice finished look. Okay, spinning this around, trying to find those other locations. This is why you put your pipe cleaners to the outsides. Much easier to find. I just give them the extra twist at the end when I'm done and I know I'm not going to put anything in them just so they don't sometimes work their way loose. I've had that happen when I've only done it like two times so now I make sure I twist it a lot more than just twice. Okay, one more. Hey, all those little uh, styrofoam balls you'll see will get glued on. After. After she's done. I'm like, you guys don't so, want to watch me do this yeah, 24 times. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, she said she'll uh, hot glue them. Yes, I will. Right now, is cat is a ribbon hard to work with? No, it's super easy. You if you can, easy. If you get really good quality ribbon, it's so much easier to work with. If you have ribbon that's a little bit on the substandard or um, like the polyester or satin based ribbon, even though it might be wired, it's still hard. It likes to collapse in the middle and not hold its shape all the way down. It wants to kind of fold in here. So here's the last two. Okay, perfect. So there's our base. Now we're gonna build our bow. So I'm going to set this to the side 
and I'm going to use my bow dabra and pull all the ribbon we're using. So we're actually using three inch and a half. So we're probably going to do them exactly like that. And then we're doing, I think I'm going to do it like this and then break this up with some Swiss dot in here. So this is the layers of my ribbon as I'm building it. Oh, see, that's great compliment. You said your design is so beautiful. I didn't care for much wreaths until I saw yours. It's gorgeous as is. Thank you. And now there's some people who say sometimes you put too much ribbon on. You know, as a designer, individual designers, you can add as much as you want. You can stop at any point and say, you know, that's enough. I'm not going to add any more. Um, it's funny because when I went and looked back at a lot of my wreaths when I started, um, most of them didn't have bows because honestly, I sucked at bow making. So it was a lot of practice, practice, practice because I knew that was a key element I was leaving out. Um, some didn't have signs, you know. A lot of it was what I could find at my local craft stores because I didn't know about craft outlet. Didn't know about the race shop or, you know, well, back then there was only three places you could buy your supplies from. Yeah. Trendy Tree, Craft Outlet, and the race shop. That was it. And then everybody else started to buy supplies to backfill. So back in 2018, when wreath making really took off, people were amazed to find that there were no supplies to be had because wreath making was such a big deal. And now um, there are so many more suppliers that it's made it super easy. Uh, that's a good question. Richard asked, uh, do you think a bow really makes a sale where maybe without it, it wouldn't? Um, no, because I think that there are certain wreath designs depending upon how you're landscaping that and designing it. Sometimes a bow just might be a little bit over the top. You know, because I've had, when I'm doing my lives, I've had people tell me, don't put a bow on. <laughs> Stop. It's right there. You know, like maybe I'm going to put a big 12 inch round or 14 inch on here. And when you do something that big, you know, like if I was to do a 12 or 14 inch, it really is like kind of pushing, um, adding a bow to it or adding a ton of embellishments after that. So I just think that you kind of have to weigh what you want you know sometimes you can tell that it needs something more um, but let me give you the dimensions on this bow so far the tails are cut at 10 inches and the loop size on this one is five and a half inches i'm going to do a dovetail cut which is bring the wired sides together you have your fold right Destination point is the end of the wire. So depending upon how high up, like I'm going to cut a shallow one here. That's a pretty shallow V. But if you want to go deeper and have a deeper V, then just bring it up on your fold. Same destination point though. And then it goes deeper into your V. That again is entirely up to you. There's some people who do just barely. Um, some people don't dovetail at all. They just kind of cut it off in an angle. There is no right or wrong. It's like art. It's all subjective to what you like or what your buyer might like. Okay. So we are going to use this. Look how much of this I had. And this is from, does it have a date on here? I want to say this is from like 2018 or 2017. Look how much I still have left. A 50 yard spool of ribbon is like your lifeline. You will have that forever. So we'll do a deep V on this one. Okay, and we're gonna go nine and a half inches in. So right here, nine and a half. You're gonna gather and then just twist and then push that into your bow maker. And I just like the pro, not pro bow, uh, bow dabra. It was what was readily available. Cause like I said, when I started, I sucked at making bows. I needed all the help I could get. Um, but I also, um, money was, money was tight. 
So doing something like a Probo, at that time it was 40 bucks. That was way out of my budget for, um, you know, making wreaths. Especially when you're like, well, what if, what if you're just starting out? What if you don't know if it's going to sell? <coughs> you know, you don't want to go all out and buy a ton of supplies. And then you find out you don't really enjoy it. It feels more like a job. So these are five inches with nine and a half inch tails. And then um, the Odabra is also my extra set of hands when I don't have somebody here to help. You know, if I'm holding ribbon, I'm like, you could use clothespins or chip clips or binder clips, but your Odabra holds everything for you. Just like this, all it's doing is holding all my pieces until we can assemble it all together. Plus, it fits in a rectangular shape box, which makes stacking in your craft room really nice. Everything for me is about size and where can it, where can it be stored. This one is nine inches in. Okay, twist. Go ahead and place that inside. And we're gonna measure this one to four and a half inches. So it's kind of coming down about a half inch every single time. So bring this in. There's four and a half. Flip it around and do the same on the other side. Just make sure. And then back out to nine. Just like so. If you guys have any other questions, I'd love to be able to answer any questions you guys have. We are doing Swiss Dot next. This one is also from Craft Outlet. Swiss Dot's probably your most universal ribbon next to a solid color. Because you can get it in almost any color, like red and white, black and white. And this will be eight and a half inches in. And that'll add our pop of red. And because the one below it is four and a half inches. If I put my fingers in the loops and pull, I don't have to really measure the bottom one. There we go. But I do need to measure the telly to make sure that we're staying on the right. Cut that one just a smidge. Crooked, so I had to fix that. Okay, just lost the pin head. Mm. So I don't like to just leave the pin in there. Okay, we'll do our snow drift, which will tie this into all of our mesh. And this one will be eight inches. And this will be a four inch loop. So we're coming down another half inch on our loop size. So we need to check measurement right there. Do the same to the other side. Check measurement. And then out to eight. That's just what size are the first loops in the bow? I think there were five and a half, right? Yes. Five so, yeah, ten inch tails and five and a half inch loops. 
And when I said, yes, it's an inexpensive tool. I use mine to hold flex tubing, deco mesh, and ribbons. Yes. It's also how I use it to hold mm. the deco mesh for my angel tree toppers. Because without it, I either have to have another person or um, grow an extra set of arms and hands. Okay, so this is going to be seven and a half. Jane asked, how long did you start doing lives? I'm a bit scared because I take long to release. Uh, just do 20, it. 2018? I, yeah, I started in February of 2018 doing lives because I couldn't grow my business anymore. Um, just doing posts. You have to get in there and do lives. You know what my first live was is how to ship a wreath. And um, from there, some good, you know, rule of thumbs, because some people just don't like being on camera. So this view works. <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to see anyone. You could always do go into Hobby Lobby and show me what are the top five products, products for Christmas you think you would love to have. You know, just show people what's in your local Hobby Lobby. Uh, show us what the ribbon looks like out there, you know, wherever you're at. It does not have to be making a wreath. And a lot of people just love, if you're somebody who paints, a lot of people just love to watch someone paint. You know, maybe soft music's in the background and someone's just painting away. I mean, look at Bob Ross for years, painting happy trees. And now everybody loves to watch his old videos. Last one. This one's going to be our three and a half inch loop and our seven inch tail. This is the final one. So seven in. And then our three and a half. Flip this up and around. We're actually finishing this roll up. So let's make sure. There we go. Starting to get pretty thick in there. A lot of ribbon, especially with that fur edge. It really is wanting to push everything else up and out. But I encourage you, just take the chance. You know, to have a couple people that'll um, tune in with you and talk to you. And in all honesty, when you're filming your live, it's just you in your living room talking to the camera. You know, there's people on the other end, but the reality is just you in the kitchen or me, me in the kitchen. You might be at your craft room table. Just take the leap of faith and just do it. Okay, so I'm pushing all these out. So just like I'm lifting a club sandwich out after I remove my toothpick, um, your pipe cleaner is gonna go right down the middle you're going to take your fingers and really hold it flush up against the base and then just push the rest of it around. So you're twisting as you're going. So much easier on your hands that way. And as we get older, we lose all that strength in our hands. Okay, fluffing the bow. People's biggest challenge is fluffing their bows or making them, which is just stacking ribbon in a bodabra or um, any bow making device. This is an 18 by 24 inch cutting board. It's three quarter inch thick. This is an inch and a half to two inch C hook. It's just got a screw in it. If you don't want to invest the money in the cutting board, I always say if you have one extra laying around, just sand it, go get a C hook. And then all the C-hook does is prevent the ribbon from sliding all over the um, work surface. Otherwise, I wouldn't use a cutting board. I just fluff on the mat. But I need something to hold everything in place. 
All, can... all crafters should take after Bob Ross. Huh? There's no mistakes, just happy accidents. Happy accidents, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, you can also go to your local home improvement stores and purchase them. Pre-cut lumber generally comes in 24 by 24 by one inch thick, which is perfect. It's just going to be a little bit wider than mine is, I think. Are we having ours designed 2424? Yes. So I'm having one custom made <laughs> by a friend who um, does woodworking. So I was like, I'd love to show your woodworking skills because it's all going to be inlaid with this gorgeous wood. Um, okay, so when you're fluffing, remember it's wired ribbon. We're not fluffing, we're separating first. So we're separating tops from bottoms, we're separating loops from tails, and everything has to go opposite. So you start at the very, very bottom, and you do a loop here. You do a tail off to the right. Okay, that's your first step. Starting at the bottom, one loop, one tail, doesn't matter which goes, just whichever way you start, on the opposite side, you want to make sure that those kind of match up. So flipping back over to the other side, our tails need to go directly opposite and our loops. So if I was to hold this stack up, you can kind of see it. There we go. We have our tails and then our loops are completely opposite. So we're going to go to the next one down. So we're going to pull our tail this time off here and then we're going to let the loop fall in between. Just like this. I haven't fluffed. Everything is still flat. And then we're going to go to the other side and make sure we have our tail over here and our loop here so that it is like alternating tails and loops so that each time you bring down two layers, you have them alternating. Loops are like together, tails are together. Okay. From here, we're going to kind of follow suit. So we're following back over here where we have a tail and a loop. And then back over to the other side, we are going to do our loop and our tail. Okay. Next one down, we're going loop, tail, tail. There's my loop. Okay. Back over here, we're going to go loop and tail. Back over here, here's my tail, here's my loop. We're getting closer. So now we have, here's our loop, here's our tail. We go opposites, here's a loop and tail. And then here, final opposite. And then we are loop and tail. Now, just so you think that it's not, or it's starting to get fluffed, this is what I showed my group early today. It's all flat, okay? Um, everything is just laid in a stack. So in order to give life to this, we're going to start at the top and you're gonna lift your loops up and you're going to fan your tails out. You decide how you like your bow to be built because you're building it now from the top going down to the bottom. If you want your tails mixed in with your loops, move them wherever you want them to go. So we're going to go here. Okay. I'm going to go back over here and find that. That's going to go to my outside. And here's my tails that go with that. And then we're going to pop our red right in here, because I like the way that looks. So that means it needs to come more to the center. And we're gonna pop that. We need to find our red tail. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna fluff the bottom three. So there's one. There's two. And I'm gonna do it three. Okay, here, same thing. I'm going over here, one, two, 
and I'm just moving it the way I want to see it. Three. And because this is secured down to the board, I can really pull up on my loops and give them some, here, we need some guidance. We need to be here. If you feel like something like maybe this tail might be a little too long, go ahead and cut it. You know, you're the designer, you decide what you want. There we go. Up, up, up. And see how we went from a flat bow, which is technically how you could ship it if you wanted to, but then you'd have to give the customer some sort of instructional video that um, would tell them, here's how you would go about fluffing your bow. So, and there you go. Perfect bow, ready for a wreath. So just take time building one, um, separating, and then fluff. So many people get in the habit of thinking you kind of have to fluff as you're separating, but you don't. Okay. Thanks, I'm loving how I explain this. I'm having tough time with my bows. Practice, and practice, Susan, practice. Have you really helped so much with seeing this process. Thank you for doing that. You're most welcome. Thanks, and I love the overview best as well. <laughs> it's so funny because it's like when I sat and looked at YouTube last week to see what people thought. It was like half of them said, we like it better the other way, and the other half's like, we love it. And I'm like, how do you how do you accommodate? So that's why I'm like, I'll split it. Half I'll do in the front on Fridays, and then the other half will do it this way. So this way we make everyone somewhat happy. So now we are going to add our sign. Because this sign is at least a quarter inch thick, and my staple gun has quarter inch staples in it, we are going to attach our sign with a staple gun. You could use the adhesive cable ties, which you see some people use. Um, I would just ask that you reinforce the cable ties with an extra layer of glue because with the changes in temperature, especially during our weird weather here, you have a tendency sometimes where they will pop off. So it's always good to give it an extra measure of security. So a staple gun for me means the sign is not gonna pop off and I don't have to glue it. Okay, now this is the fun part. You get to decide where you want the sign. Do you want it straight in the middle with a bow on top? Do you want it slightly off to the side with maybe a bow up here? Do you want it Slightly here with a bow off side. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can position it. Most of the time I generally do, I don't know. I'm kind of liking it right in the middle. And if we do right in the middle, um, let's see. We kind of place our bow here and just kind of laying it on top to see where everything's gonna go. Cause you have those two and a half inch tails, which are five inches. So it kind of determines where your bow needs to go because you don't want to cover the sign. I kind of like the way that looks with the bow in the center. Yeah. Okay. So let's attach the sign since we know that's where it needs to go. I am going to lift and look at there. There's my interior pipe cleaner. I'm going to use that because number one, I know it goes right down to the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of help guide it in place. I'm not gonna twist it overly tight because sometimes you have to make adjustments and move your sign around a bunch of different times. And we should have another one. I'm looking. Uh, the sign is a six inch by 12 inch, I believe, so. It should be over. Yeah, six by twelve inch sign. It should be. I'm trying to find the middle. It is over here. So I'm going right in the center. I don't want to go right, right center, but a little bit on the top, a little bit in the bottom. 
So just like that. Now, here's the dilemma that most of us face is great looking sign, but I can totally define the border. We need to soften that up a little bit. So what that means is finding your mesh sometimes underneath, like right in here, I need to find that mesh, lightly kind of pull that up, just so that it slightly starts to feather your edges. Thank you, Joanne. She sent 100 stars. Thanks, Joanne. We appreciate that. Okay, we're going to feather this one here. This is where you kind of have to maneuver your mesh a little bit. Refluff some of your bows if you smash along the way. We're going to grab some of this. This is where it gets overly clingy. Okay, blending. Don't want to pull it all the way up. This side, you need to keep it flat. Why is this where the bow needs to go? So we're going to have the loops feathering our edge there. But we're going to do this one. Just lightly. Trying to pull oh so gently. Just like that. And then go back. Refluff. So that it, see, here's the difference now. We don't have that defined edge. We just have these light little feathers, edges to the edge of our wreath. Now we can come in with our bow. So the thumb of pipe cleaner, there it goes. And I am going to look at where that lays. And that's pretty much right where I want it to be which again is right over one of my center pipe cleaners. So that makes it super easy. Joanne says, beautiful, love watching you. Thank you, Joanne. Joanne said, I just bought the same stapler at Home Depot this week for 23 bucks, yep. It's the best stapler in the world. Home Depot, Lowe's, or even Amazon, you can get it. Yeah, so Black & Decker Power Shot. Black & Decker should give me one. <laughs> right? Because I've been, been endorsing it for like, the last four years. It's just such the, per I got it for my husband because. Yeah, it was mine. <laughs> it was his. And it was for putting up like all the Christmas lights. And then after you do that for a while, your hands get so stiff. You know, if you're going around the whole outside of your house, hanging up Christmas lights, I'm like, there has to be an easier way. There has to be a way for people who do this day in and day out. Um, it's so much easier with this table. Yeah, it is. Okay, so. Here is our edges. We're finessing our bow, making sure all of our tails are where we want the tails to fall, which is not in the way of our sign. Okay, just like that. Flipping it this way. Just make sure you're, if you're using the stapler for the wood signs, that you use the quarter inch staples. A very important tip. Otherwise, your staples go right through your sign. Just Kathy like that. said I'm new and very impressed. It's beautiful. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Okay, now it's time to embellish. Oh, Terry said beautiful wreath braided instructor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now, um, embellishments. Let me show you what you can get at your local Hobby Lobby, first of all. So, you can... I don't want those ones. I know you keep trying to throw them at me. There's these little picks that Hobby Lobby has, and these are 99 cents, and you get six of them. These are going on our wreath, because they're like 60 cents a pop. So we're gonna divide up a couple of these. I try to find them every year. They sell out fairly quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull our price tag off. There we go. Try to get all that off. They always make it an extra job for us crafters removing our price tags. Okay, from here, I'm going to snip the whole bottom right here. And it's going to just separate those into six nice little peppermint, fake peppermints. 
do the same. Like that one. And snap the bottom. Help if I actually did it the right way. Okay. In addition to these, you can go to Hobby Lobby as well that has these fun picks. These were $2.49 each. And then we get three fun little extra bold red and white peppermints. So these are super fun to have. So we're going to be incorporating those. Um, you could go to, I think Hobby Lobby sells these, but you can also get these from the Dollar Tree. You can make all kinds of fun things. If you melt them at a low heat, you can make little hearts, um, but you can incorporate these into your wreath. I'm not sure I'm going to use these, believe it or not, um, cause I, I want them a little bit smaller and shorter. And then, um, we are going to add some red and white balls. So obviously we have one that's a little bit more peppermint candy cane. I love the red and white dots. These are from Michael's. Um, Michael's is selling them this way. I think Dollar Tree has some as well, but they don't have the ones that are striped or dotted. It would just be like red or white or silver. So we're going to incorporate those. Matter of fact, I'm going to use the balls first. So Pull out the ones I want, which are always the ones at the bottom. Okay, so there's that. I want, I don't want the silver and I don't want the white, but I do like these because I think that these basically say, yes, you need to put it in that design. So like that. We'll probably add one over here and we will add one over here, just like that to our wreath. Maybe do this here. This is where you kind of like people go, well, how do you know where to put what? I just play with it and whatever I like is where it stays. So I kind of like that look, although maybe we go two red and one white. Hmm. Hmm. These were just opposites. I'm feeling that it needs to be like this. Or like this. What do you guys think? Should we go these on the ends and the red in the center? Or should I put this in the center? I put this on the outside. What do you think looks better? What do you think? Well, honey, mm -hmm. for public? Well, public, but I also ask your opinion too. Well, I like one like that. Which one? I like the little pick with the feet. Pick no, the, these. Huh? The balls. No, I, I like those where they're at. You do like them where they're at? Yeah. Are you just being that way? No. Okay. Um, so what does everybody else say? So I'm well, kind of like... This red in the center. Okay, so this is what that looks like. Which that looks good too. Mm -hmm. That's why it's like... I don't that looks a little bit more have... uniform, yeah, because then you have the stripes and the polka dot on the outside. I'm the... like, it's either one way or the other. I'm like, I'm seeing two red together and those need to be separate and pull the thing in. Or are we doing two pattern and one non-pattern? See yeah, the most, dilemma? <laughs> most everybody said the same thing. Red in the center. Okay. And <clears throat> so I'm taking these and just kind of placing them. Like this is right smack in the center. So I'm just taking my little, I twist the rest of the cellophane. And then there's a little metal piece on the end. So I just take that, hot glue that, push that right into the center of where I have my pipe cleaner. So we're just popping little peppermint picks. So just again, on the long stem, push that right in the center. 
again, just kind of making it look festive and peppermint -y. I guess we can put one of these in each because we do have a grand total of 12. So let's pop this one in here. So that looks super pretty. Just little pops of the candy. These ones. Let's see. See, sometimes it's just, just place them. I don't like the straight ones there. I like the little round ones. And let's do another square one here. Because we did round here. And then let's go around here. Or let's go this one here. So I'm trying to alternate. Alternate, alternate, alternate. There's that one. That one got this one. And then this will go up here. Okay. So let me glue those really quickly. We already did that one. Okay. What do you guys think of the little peppermint picks? Super simple. Yeah, it's a beautiful. I like that they're too cute. So if you're gluing your ornaments, I always shatterproof, which means plastic. Mm -hmm. They're just more safe that way, just because we don't know how they're going to arrive shipped. So we're going to glue this one and tuck that right inside. Okay, glued, glued, glued. Trying to make sure. Oh, here's one. There's some that I glued and some that I didn't. Yes, I love it. The ones that looks good enough to eat. Right? Just imagine if you wanted to, you could scent it with like a peppermint scent. That one's in. You know, you can find a peppermint stick. Um, you can actually put real candy canes in it while they're in the wrapper. Yeah, you could. Most definitely, you could definitely add that. Okay, that one's there. Go up here. And all I'm doing is taking the picks and pushing them all the way into the center. So, let maybe, us... Maybe a cute little gift for the buyer who buys it. What? Send, oh, send that would be really... Cane. Yeah, that would be super cute. Send it with its own candy canes. Darn it. Now I'm going to have to start stocking that. Okay, so I just kind of make it look like frosting at the end. I'm going to tuck that down. So I said, oh yes, that would be fantastic. Yeah, but you never know for people who buy it, right? They might be sensitive to the scent. Um, so it's better to let, let, let them do it. Yeah, but we did that like with the pumpkin spice this year. We sent it. We did um, cinnamon sticks, real cinnamon sticks. But we disclosed that, that they're real cinnamon sticks. And the minute that you cut those, it just smells heavenly. I bet that would have been nice when they opened up the box. Smelling cinnamon. Smelling cinnamon. Yeah, I'm sure that it was just like, wow, what an extra added bonus, right? Okay, let me look at these. Let's break these apart because I don't like them in their pig form. So let's see what we can do with these. So we can kind of tuck some like peppermints up in the top. That's a beautiful, love it. Thank you, Patty. Margaret's a beautiful as usual. Drew Miriam said, I have that sign. I'll, I'll make you this one tomorrow. Ooh, there you go. And now you got a video to reference it off of. Inspiration, right? I love this one. So I'm going to glue that one for sure right there. So I just like how it's got a little twist on it so it can get tucked right in. I like adding the bigger bold picks 
Let's go with the smaller one. I know you like adding little hidden treasures too. Yes, lots of hidden treasures. Things that maybe the buyer's not going to see initially when they pick that up. So I'm kind of tucking those in sideways so they have a little fun picks. This one, I don't know. I like that there. Let's see if we swiped the other one from the other side. Let's see. Got to make sure the swirl goes the opposite way. Look how cute. Yeah, that's cute. I like that because it's just really going peppermint crazy. Okay, we committing. Let's say you want to make sure. One thing that's funny is I haven't seen anybody post yet. What's that? How much would you price this for? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm not pricing this one that high. Um, because I'm only going to do this one for now this year, um, this has a really low price point, and it's only in my shop on the website. So we need to add something to our bow. And this is where those little straight peppermints are coming into play. So I'm gonna tuck these in to our bow. It's subtle without going like overly crazy and just sticking peppermints everywhere. So I'm just rewrapping them. And then just kind of sliding those in. <clears throat> there we go. I'll add another one just so we have a trio. We'll go right over here. So I posted the link to your website and pinned it at the bottom. Yeah. I know this one won't last. <clears throat> I think I made one of these last year, but I did it on an evergreen frame. And you have it under new products, right? Well, it's under Christmas race, or if you go to Christmas race, it kind of goes to the back end, so you have to scroll. But if you go to new products, you might have to do the same. It's only going to be the sign, though, because we didn't know what it's going to look like. Right, you're only going to see the sign. So let us... Do we want to put that? I don't like Is it that. The big one or the small one? It's the small one. Mm -hmm. Let me look. Or a bell. Mm, I don't want to put a bell in it. Let's look. Ooh, I like that. Okay, that's going in there just like that. Richard asks, do you ever watch other designers make wreaths? Um, or other areas you used to I used to um but I kind of felt like my designs were leaning towards doing things similar so I just kind of pulled back and said I don't want to watch somebody else because I really want to focus on my own creativity instead of going oh I like like occasionally I will it's I'm not saying I won't it's just for a long time I was following a ton of people and then I just felt like my creativity stopped because I was like looking at what everybody else was doing. And so this way, it just allowed me to focus on, you know, grab a sign and then design something around that sign or design something around a particular ribbon you love. Okay. Let us remove this gray. Sure, mom would go back in and glue all the other little pieces down. Yeah, I have to. I have to go in and glue all the little these pieces, well, but everything else is glued. <laughs> right? Um, so what do you guys think? We're done, we are finished. Um, I thank you guys for joining me and being here with me. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next week because this week's focus was. Let's just do candy cane, and um, so I don't know what's going to happen on Friday, but it'll be something fun. Um, but I hope 
you guys enjoyed this view, that you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me on Sunday night. And um, if there's anything, any questions I can answer for you, um, you can always email me at catscreation777 at gmail.com. Um, I generally don't get to the instant message thing right away, but you can always email me. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all I have for you. So thank you guys. Have an amazing week and I'll see you on Friday. Good night, everyone.